Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Back, your weekly podcast for you engaged in the Game Pass collection, bringing you three unique perspectives and varying skill range. I am the master artist of this episode, Andrew. With me, uh, the one who still uses finger paints, Keith. Hello. And the doodler, Liz. Hey, guys. And this week, we decided to check out what all the fuss was about with Pentiment from Obsidian Studios. Pentiment is a point-and-click adventure game where you are playing Andreas Mailer, a journeyman artist who is trying to become a master artist by working on his craft in a small town called Tassings in 1525. But of course, a murder happens. And it is you take it upon yourself to help to prove the innocence of a friend. So going around... Liz, was this a game or a pass for you? It's a game for me. I was really excited about playing this, but it's a bit too sad for my taste. <laughs> yeah, this was this was one of your anticipated yeah. ones your uh, E3 list. Because I definitely thought there were going to be some like dark moments and stuff, but like there are some things that are just like, that's just sad. I mean, when you're dealing with the medieval times, there's always kind of sadness. <laughs> I know, and I don't like that, and I don't <laughs> like feelings. So uh, it's still a game. Uh, I found out the ending. Uh, from Andrew, because I knew I wasn't going to finish it this week. Um, another game I might not finish. <laughs> but, um, yeah, game. So, I, I think this is going to be another back-to-back definite game. I, I saw this is weird. This is a straight I, story. I know. And Trust me, I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> and and it's one of those things that I I... I don't want to get all fanboy about because I, I don't know. I, everyone's giving this a ten to ten, and I, I think it's got its own flaws within itself. So it's not perfect, but for being a story-driven game, I was enjoying it, and I would, I wanted to continue on to the story. I wanted to find out more, and I wanted to, I wanted to get involved. So I, I actually really enjoyed this, um, and so yeah, I would even call this a definite game. Man, that's like metal for this game. I can't believe I, d- I did not expect that big of praise from you, Keith. I thought you'd be like, yeah, this is, you know, this is fun, but it's boring, you know, t- to me. Yeah, it, it was a, I, so like Liz, I didn't finish it, but honestly, not for the same reasons. I, I just, I didn't get a chance to, honestly, and I'm, I wish I had finished it before the podcast, but I, I genuinely think I will finish it because I am pretty close. Yeah, surprisingly, this game is pretty long. You're looking at between 12, I think 12 to 15 hours. I finished it in 13. So yeah, this is, it's a hefty game, but I'm going to be right with you guys. This is a game. I would actually say it's a definite game. If you like point and click adventure games, this is like the best. Like my, I'm a, I'm with you, Keith. Like I don't, a lot of people are giving it like 10 out of 10. I don't, it definitely has its flaws for me. I wish this game just had a little more gameplay elements. I wish it had more puzzles because I wouldn't even really describe it as a point and click adventure game. I'd more describe it as just a narrative game, but it is so well written. The art style is phenomenal. The sound effects, like it is just, I, this game is great. Uh, if you don't like point and click adventure games, I do, this game probably will not sway you to this genre. It is just a lot of pressing a reading and making choices. But if you are into that, this is, you got to check this out. Uh, and I think, I feel like after this too, I think we can all kind of agree. Do you think Obsidian's probably Microsoft's best studio right now? Because they also came out with Grounded. You know, they 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 did Fallout Las Vegas, uh, the Fallout New Vegas. I mean, I was never a Fallout fan, but I know that it's a big, big following. And then, yeah, obviously Grounded. I probably I I think because otherwise you have what three four three with Halo Infinite and yeah, that's touchy at best. I think <laughs> so. I mean, so, yeah, I, I, I don't... think so. I don't know the others, but um, I think they're doing great. <laughs> so getting to the story of Pentiment, as I said, this takes place in medieval times, the early 1500s. We are playing Andreas Mailer, who is a journeyman artist who's trying to become a master. And he is working at the scriptorium at a local abbey where he is trying to finish his masterpiece. And so he can able, he's able to go back home to Nuremberg and marry and eventually open his own workshop. But a new character enters in town the same day. And ends up getting murdered. And one of your closest friends who actually works at the Abbey is accused of the murder. So you not really having much of a... Well, unless you make the choice. But your character doesn't really know too much about law. But you take it upon yourself to try to clear your friend's name so he doesn't get executed. And that's just chapter one. There's actually three chapters in this game. That's what I was going to say. Uh, it's like how Because they're, they're all... 
interconnected, but not enough that we we spoil if we talk too much about them. So yes. I think we'll just say that there's two other mysteries that you need to solve. Yes, throughout the uh, game. Thank you, Keith. And then not only that, I, I guess we'll say too. There will probably there will be a spoiler cast at the end of this. So we are going to try to obviously avoid spoilers to people who want to try this game and figure out the story of your own because it's a really good mystery. Uh, but if you want to hear our choices and kind of what we did, listen to the end of the episode. We'll talk about spoilers. Uh, spoilers. But what did you guys think of this story? Because to me, this is... I absolutely loved the characters in this game. Like, the characters really sold it for me. Yeah, I love that there were some that I absolutely hated and that were making me think, like, if I was a woman back then, I probably would have been murdered really quick. Yeah. <laughs> but then also, I thought it was really interesting the relationship between the townspeople and the Abbey, and you're kind of in the middle. But there were some things with the story, like... Andreas, the main character, it's weird because like I, the choices that I did, I never stuck up for the Abbey because they were doing evil, awful things. I tried to stick to the good route. And so for me, uh, I thought it was weird that like the main character doesn't really try to help them. Even like later on when he's a bit more wealthy and stuff. So I oh, doesn't try to help the, the peasants. Yeah, like he knows that the Abbey is doing evil things. He's evil things. He's getting money from the Abbey. And it's like, why can't you like help them build a new mill or something? Or like if you're going to their house, like I don't know what the customs were back then, but maybe bring a little something. You know, they're just starving. Well, so I don't so I don't want to go too far into that cuz that's where this is going to be very difficult cuz I think we're already and I'm not trying to get at you this, but I think we're already <laughs> touching on, on close to spoilers here. But how is that a spoiler? Because and, you talked uh, a little bit. No, I, don't, I don't want to, I don't want to explain how. I just No, no, no. You you're just tiptoeing this. You didn't spoil it, but you, you, didn't, you exactly. It was a tiptoe. It was a tiptoe. Okay, I'm just saying that he's in the middle and he's like and my my choices were sticking up for the townspeople. Just like saying like, Oh yeah, the Abbey's being a jerk. Yeah. Okay. This is the first chapter. That's really, then that's so, okay. Yeah, this it's first chapter, they're being a jerk. But like, <laughs> you don't really want to have... What? Try try not to say too much about the story points of the second act and the third act. I think it's in the first chapter they talk about his wife, like that he's going to get married. Yes, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, that's so okay. He's, <laughs> you can say that. They talk about how like he's going to get married and he's kind of just like not really, you know, excited about it or whatever. But the townspeople, they get married, they grind things out. They take care of each other. Phrasing. Oh my gosh. Well, this is going to be an episode. I'm just, I'm not doing well. What I'm saying is that they work like so much harder than him and they're really about family and everything. And he's just like disappointing me. Yeah. So I, I, so I'm kind of with you, Liz. Like I, I tended to not side with, with the church. And and how the things were handled as I as I progressed, but I I don't know. It was still weird because so so what I liked was the system of choices that you could build based on your character background that you could create because yeah. it has this sort of RPG element, and it's a very 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 light RPG element in the aspect of of picking some aspects of your character. Yeah, but, just as backstory. Yeah, and it, and honestly, I I don't even know that a lot of those choices have a ton of effect i think some of them do and I, they they help you pick out different clues or things for your mystery but well like i think the biggest thing is that while the story wasn't all that investing it was the mystery of it that was what really got me and i and i think why like uh what was that game that liz hated uh the which the, one the point and click one Oh my gosh, you guys always reference this. Thimbleweed well, Park. Thimbleweed Park. We well, need to like put a plaque of it somewhere. Seriously, this, this, this game. <laughs> always reference this game. So Thimbleweed Park, it was a mystery in a sense, but it was a very linear mystery. Pentamin is not linear in any way. It you can I think one of the reasons you have like that seven hour gap is you can pretty much buzz through the game and be like, Yep, you know, go to the next thing, go to the next thing, go to the next thing, and do no investigating in the middle, and you'll still get to the end and you won't fail. The story progresses, but you can really get into some meat and bones of this game. And I, and it's just so interesting to see the dynamic and social like interactions of the town yeah. that I was just, I was always trying to make sure I could do like everything. And and that was one of the things that held me back from being able to get to the end of this week. 
Oh, I, I fully agree with you, Keith. Like, I, I love history. I really enjoy kind of learning, you know, where as humans we came from, like different cultures and stuff like that. I, I'm, I, history is a big component with a lot of my family members. But I just love the medieval era because to me it is so unique of how it was socially, uh, with religion, with industrialization. It's just, it's a really interesting timepiece for me. And I, this game does not shy, like, from, how awful the kind of the history point was the obsidian definitely did their homework with like culture and everything that was going on with this game. So like, as you probably know, women weren't treated very well. And this game really kind of shows it not like in a, it wasn't like so deliberate, like in your face, but it definitely was something that was constantly going on of like women being in the background. Also just generally how awful and corrupt like the church was. Cause around this time was when Martin Luther, you know, put his thesis up in front of the church about basically calling out the church of like what they're doing wrong of taxing the peasants and making them pay way too much money to like for penance. So this game, it didn't, it, it to me just felt so realistic of like how life was going on during that time. And in, I was with you, Keith. I wanted to learn about everyone like to just what's going on and the struggles that they're going with. Cause it, it was just, it was so fun to kind of live in this environment. I was mad. Was- I couldn't eat meals with everyone. Yeah. I mean, it was fun, but then I would eat a meal with somebody that was just like, I want to slap you. Like, <laughs> Can we end this there, meal? There's some awful men in this game. And then... Oh, yeah. I mean, Martin, deadbeat loser swearing at you. Like... Oh, Martin, Martin right at the beginning was like, I'm like, I'm going to be a jerk to this guy. This guy seems like scum. And I just always picked the word, like, meanest answers to him. Yeah, I, I turned around on Martin. We, we, oh, I did too. We we so so yeah. Maybe you and I took a similar path because I did the same okay. thing, and I was, and then I immediately went, oh well, I don't know. Maybe he's not so bad, but I, I just yeah, I I actually appreciated all the dialogue. The only complaint I had about the dialogue, and this was more a something I encountered, and it's not a fault of the game, was I was doing a little bit of cloud gaming on this, and it had a tendency to backtrack because sometimes the autosave doesn't go too frequently it's not terrible but it, anywho if you have to reread some of the dialogue a couple times the pace that it goes at is a little slow yeah but outside of that i also love that because it, maybe we're getting ahead with like the the artwork of it should we wait for that well uh, you are apparently well should do you want <laughs> me to wait i'll wait yeah wait because uh i i wanted to ask you guys so keith you brought up the uh the do uh picking your background for your for andreas Yes. I'm curious, what did you guys pick? I wish I did law like you did, because that, later on with the story... See, I knew this was murder was, mystery. That's why I was like, I'm going to go law. Yeah, I was oh, definitely bummed call. out that I didn't do that. But real quick, I will get right back to your question. <laughs> you said you ended up liking Martin? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and, I, don't, know that I, to, I don't know that I ended up liking. I, I was nice to him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's debatable whether or not I liked him. Yeah. Okay. This. There's there's story elements of it, but Liz, what did you pick? Oh my gosh, what did I, I did? Medical. You did medicine, I think, right? Yeah, I did that, and then I don't remember. I know I didn't do occult, and I didn't do law. What was the other one? I don't remember the other one. I'll think about it, Keith. What there's you theology. Do? I think you did logic. I think that was the one you did. Oh, yeah, I think it might have been logic. I think that's what I did. Oh. I was actually just pulling up. I took a screenshot of my, my masterpiece at the end of Act 1 because I think it actually gives you some of the information. Maybe not. But yeah, because I did I, – I had traveled to Italy. So I had, yeah, I, knew, I did Italy. I knew Italian and Latin. Uh, I did theology. So I, I, I had a little bit of that. I was a rabble rouser. Uh, I did rabble rouser too. And then I think I – think Or I did, rapscallion. Like, yeah, but I think I did logic for my other one. It was the one with like the bell. Oh no, that's a speech. Speech. Okay, I, so I did that like, one too. Oh man. All so right. then, what did I do as my profession then? I did. Well, you speech. pick. You pick two things that you studied. So for me, I, yeah, I went oh, to Italy. Probably I did theology then. Uh, yeah, theology and uh, speech then, or whatever. Uh, okay. Yeah, those were to be the two categories. I think. Uh, so for me, yeah, I, uh, I went from Italy. Uh, my past was a rap, I was a rap scallion. I was good at speech. And then, yeah, my, my, uh, studies were occult and law. Occult, occult didn't really help me too much. 
but the law definitely did. No, th- yeah. and honestly, theology didn't help me as much as I thought I did because I would I would use it and they'd be like, "You don't actually know anything." I was like, "Well, then why am I bothering to try?" <laughs> I can't believe I didn't think it's a murder mystery. Like, no, the law. <laughs> Neither that's, Liz, it's like, okay. that's why I'm like I'm just I'm kicking myself. Not even because it's useful later, but yeah. Oh, and I thought it. I thought I did something medical too because I was like, oh. I want to be able to like examine the body, which I ended up missing. I couldn't even figure out where the body was. So I actually ended up missing that. Yeah, At one point you were further than me and you had zero achievements and I had two and yeah. I was behind you. And obviously you went way, way past <laughs> me. But yeah, I actually, I was there for the autopsy. They're very tasteful when they turned over the body. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. No shock value in this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, speaking of which too, yeah, if you are like us and you have a young one around, I think this game is perfectly fine to play in front of your kids because there is no audio, no voice acting. It's all just writing. So unless your kid can read, there's some swearing, but um, it's also kind of hard to read some graphic stuff. There's like, you're, uh, like two bloody scenes. Even then, I don't think they're awful. You can, and skip you, you kind of know them. they're coming. What? Sorry. You, you can not look at one of them. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just, I thought the story was just so engrossing. I, I, I'm with you, Keith. I kind of wish I could kind of go a little bit faster on some of the dialogue because some of it I had to, I ended up redoing because I screwed up and I was like, oh, nope, there's an achievement here. I need to make sure I get that. So I agree. I wish you could kind of like pass, go like a little bit quicker with some of the text. But uh, I just, the story in this game was just so well written. I just loved seeing just the social, the whole, like the whole social aspect of this game and just learning of everyone's past and how everyone works in this village and the different types of religion because you know, in the medieval times, like religion is like the center focal point of all their conversations and all their day-to-day tasks. So it was just so cool, like seeing how everything was so well-written. But then of course, with this village, you got some people still worship the old pagan gods. Some who worship some of the Roman gods because you're still part of the Holy Roman empire. I just, I love the story. Love the hypocrisy of some of the people too, where they were like saying like, there are some people who stuck to what they said, like gossiping is wrong and they don't do it. But then there are other men that are like, gossiping is um is wrong these women need to stop gossiping and then they're just running their mouth and it's just like oh it's so infuriating <laughs> yep that was the time it's bad for the women to do it but it's okay for the men to do it yeah just but um let's get, yeah, get into the art style keith as you were saying the art style in this game is phenomenal <laughs> yeah so i was i mean and like i knew because i had looked into it but what was the other game we played that had like the art art style um, Yes, um, Procession of Calvary. Yes, Procession of Calvary. Now, it has that look of the art style because it shares the same timeline, but the the way people move very different. It's yeah. not it's not like paper mo- motion, but it kind of is. It's so unique. They move weird. That <laughs> I I truly liked it and I I don't know, I then like right down to the dialogue. It was like Andrew said, there's no voice acting, but What they do is you can turn it off and you can have very standard dialogue, but you can also have each each person based on their class within or status within society has different text styles. So you have like I I loved that scribbly and messy for the the peasants, and then as you get up into the the religious elite, it's all fancy and and it's perfect manuscript. It's just, I I loved how that was done. Sometimes it was a little bit much to read and I kind of considered turning it off, but there was also times where I liked having it on because it would change for characters. And I thought that was cool. And also, I don't know if you noticed, like it would have, if someone was speaking softer, it was almost like a more shaded color. And then once they were yelling, it would have like exploded ink and have this like big text. And it just, it conveyed emotion without having any text. It was just so cool. I really liked it. So I guess I'm going to fanboy a little bit about this. No, I'm, I'm totally with you. Cause I thought I saw that too. At the beginning of the game, it tells you like, Hey, like this is how script is done. You know, some people can't read cursive. So it's, it's nice that they give you the option to turn it off, but it is, like you said, it is kind of hard to read some of them because some of them do talk old, old English. And like when you talk to Claus and his family, the uh, Druckers, they work at the printing press. And so their text is like this printing text and their S's are F's. Like it's kind of weird, but like that's how they did it. And so some of it can be a little hard to read, but I absolutely loved like 
when the, the text would change when you're talking to someone and yeah, it's a peasant. So it's all scribbly, but then you find out like, Oh no, they're actually educated. They know how to read. And all of a sudden just switches to another like art style of their text. I just, I thought that was such a cool technique. But I also thought it was interesting that I feel like they didn't really talk different based on the class. No, it, it just, it literally was just kind of how the script was done, but it, that's the thing. It's kind of your character because this is, a story that's kind of being written out as you're playing it. So some people are talking and there's a grammatical error and you see it get erased and then recorrected. So it's kind of a way of like whoever's writing this story is kind of judging the people a little bit like, Oh, this person's ignorant. So he's going to talk like this and it's all swiggly. But then he's like, Oh wait, no, he's educated deletes it. And Oh, now it's slightly, slightly better looking. Yeah. And I, I just meant like the actual words, like I, I yeah, the words would change. I think there was differences though. It, it, honestly, in in kind of the overall tone of say like the Abbey and how they were like I don't know they're very snooty about their their dialogue. Whereas I don't know the commoners were they would curse more and it was just more like freely spoken. Even just you know like taking the Lord's name in vain, little things like that. You could sense that among the commoners and the peasants, but amongst the Abbey and even the noble folk, like they didn't necessarily speak as much like that. So I thought there was slight differences, at least. Yeah. I, I mean, I, even the Abbeys, I mean, if you're dealing with anyone in the Abbey, they always, of course, have to end like saying, God bless you. Even if you're being a complete jerk to them and insulting them, they're like, uh, God bless you. Leave. <laughs> no, leave. <laughs> no, one of the things that I actually liked most in kind of going back to the storytelling is that even just not the the obvious of like the the church being a little bit evil back then in and being like all, you know, controlling everything that happened. I I thought it was interesting how they kind of had those like behind the scenes of like, they did a lot of things they weren't supposed to. And yeah, everyone kind of knows that. I'm sure that that's always happened that, you know, monks and and nuns and all them weren't perfect, but it, I don't know, it, it didn't shy away from that. And I thought it was interesting to see, but none of it felt like it was like trying to, Like it wasn't being preachy or trying to convey like a message of like, oh, the church is awful. Like nothing felt like that. It was just, yeah, exactly. It always felt like it was being honest. Like at the end of the day, these are still human beings, which are awful and they're doing awful things like normal human beings are. No, but I feel like that they were kind of awful though. Like they're like, for like, I don't, is this boy to say that they were trying to steal a widow's house? Well, yeah, yeah there's there was, there's that level of awful, but I mean, there was yeah. even human aspects of like they talked a lot about how like the the nuns and the priests would quote unquote interact with the town, or you you may or may not have run into a couple brothers that yes. like to have <laughs> each other's company in different ways, and and <laughs> and I like that again. It wasn't like this weird like it didn't feel unrealistic. It, it actually felt like it fit. And that's one of the things that I, I sometimes get don't like about games is when they try too hard, but it all felt to fit because like you said, yes, there is, they had this old piety to them, but they were real people at the end of the day and they did real things. And, and I just, I don't know. I appreciated the, the way the writing was done so much in that aspect. I'm just saying that they went against god's word throughout the entire thing friends it's not even just you know having like sex out of marriage stealing from the peasants letting people starve um stealing from the elderly there was um something that was unreported that should have been reported like they didn't care about each other in that respect like there's a lot of things that they did i don't remember hearing anything good that they did what did they do good for anyone other than themselves? I mean, obviously his friend was good. And I feel like they're kind of like hinting that like they're kind of like the people in the scriptorium were just like kind of like just doing their jobs. But you're also still working for evil people and making money from that. So for me, I'm just saying like they were kind of depicting the church as evil. I think the big evil people were the higher ups, like the abbot definitely was evil. But mm. everyone knew that they were doing this. Everyone knew that they were stealing from the peasants who couldn't even afford to eat. So for me, it's like, I, they're all a part of it. But that was like, that was the issue with the time. Then if you're someone of a higher power, you can't do anything about it. There's no one you can really report to. Like they couldn't just like send a letter to the Pope or something like that, or to a Bishop and be like, Hey, this guy's evil. No, because that's just how times were. Same with, the Baron, when he came in, like he's, he's a nobleman. Like you can't do anything about it. 
Like you just, your class is lower and you can't do anything about it. So like a lot of the brothers that were on the lower part of the totem pole, I think we're all very nice people. They were good to the community. You think Guy was nice? Oh, no. Guy was like a new person. He was <laughs> awful. He, well, he was awful. And, and I think all in all, at least within this realm of Pentiment, is it was almost a showing the changing of the guard, if you will, where yeah. they talk a, a lot about Father Matthias, who was there before Gurnot, right? And yeah. and how good he was to the people, at the very least in the aspect of like he didn't fully enforce every church rule. He he gave a lot more than he needed to or could have compared to the current guy. And I think Guy was an example of like he saw that he could just get into power by being part of the church. He didn't want to be part of the church. He wasn't a good person. He just saw it as a way to power. And that's why he was a scumbag just like Gernot. Yep. But then you had the Adox and the Pieros who were who were good people. They were part of like the old way where they came in and they genuinely were trying to help the people. Yeah. At least in help my Help them what? Help them what though? I don't I just can't think of anything that they actually help the people with. Well, Piero specifically, like you like you said, Andreas is an outsider and Piero took him under his wing. Like literally had no reason to. But he taught Andreas a bunch of like art styles and what to do, and like he always was like a good critic. Which is, and I I think that he did it out of the goodness of his heart, but still making the church money. And he isn't a peasant; he isn't hurting for money. So this is somebody who is an artist, who's an outsider, but who is the, seen as higher up. No, and I and I and I. So I I think the biggest thing is that well, it seems crazy to be like oh he let them go into the forest and collect firewood and you know hunt on the animals and stuff but for what the sort of allowances for the church were for father matthias and the previous priors of the church to be like that in that area and give those concessions that actually was a huge help for the townspeople to be able to go out and hunt hunt a deer and not just rely on whatever grain they could grow yeah that's a that's a huge difference in what they're eating in a meal even but if again, they're still that's living Matthias. in that's not the people in the church I now. Get that. I get that's my point is what I'm saying is that the new the new people taking over are the ones who are evil. And and I'm not I'm not doubting that, but that's why you have the, some of the lower ones like the Adox and the Pieros who were still good. I was just pointing out that you said that they're good people helping the town, but I never saw them doing anything for the town. That's all I said. I'm not saying that they're bad people. I'm just saying that if you're working for evil people and you are getting the money that is stolen from the peasants, then maybe I could see you, you know, like helping little old ladies across town or something. Like, doing well, that's the thing. Monks, the monks generally aren't allowed to leave the abbey. There's only like a certain amount of people that can't actually leave to interact with the town. Like a monk's life is usually meant to be enclosed in the abbey doing your tasks, doing your duties, and, like, that's kind of it. There's only, like, a couple that are actually allowed they to They can leave. send money. They're allowed to. Oh, but they, and the they don't get paid. Them, yeah, the monks themselves don't have money. The church does, but they they don't have money. They, they're they just keeping for the church. And and I don't know, just I think they could still be good people. They're, they're kind of trapped under the wing. So the music. <laughs> uh, the music isn't much, but when it kicks in, I love the music. There's just there's a couple times where they have like orchestral music and it is so good. Uh the most you're hearing is just sound effects, which you're hearing a lot of a pen scribbling for the text, which is very relaxing. Yeah, I fell asleep I, a couple times. Yeah, I was gonna she's just gonna warn. <laughs> I was like gonna say, don't play this game if you're tired, because yeah, you might fall asleep. But I, I love the sound design. I feel like every once in a while the the music changed. But overall, like, I, I always had the volume up, but I didn't feel like I needed it either. No, you could absolutely play this without any sound. Yeah. But I, I think it adds just enough. I, I think, like Andrew said, the, the scribbling text or if you're talking to somebody who has printed text, you hear the typewriter. There's just little little things like that that make it nice, and it's not overbearing. Sometimes you hear a lot of the same sound effects, and you go, ugh. But it it's not too much. And I think the thing I noticed the most is that the music is it's only for a certain period usually. Like if you don't choose options quick enough, the music can run out and it won't replay itself, which is almost nice because by that, the music also doesn't get wicked repetitive. Yeah. 
I mean, I kind of wish it would repeat though, because I love the music. Sometimes like, a little bit, because there was one scene where it was like it kicked on, and it was like this music's awesome, and then the baby started crying, and I ran upstairs, and then by the time I came down, the music was off, and now I I can't hear that music anymore. So, I kind of wish it repeated it a little bit too, but it also <laughs> wasn't the worst thing. And oddly enough, too, su- surprisingly, so there's music. There's kind of like not to not to really spoil anything, but at the end there is kind of a cinematic with music. Wonderful. Then the credits roll. But dead rock. silence. No, dead silence. <laughs> no, not sorry, Keith, though, butt rock. But I was like really kind of surprised with that choice where I'm like, oh, this nice like orchestral music playing, like for this cutscene, it's really great. Then credits roll and it's just dead silence. And I'm like, this that's kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, that is strange. I don't really remember the music, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I remember the scratching of the pen, but that's about it. I, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, it's. I'm sure there's there's more to it, but I almost want to say it just sounds like Renaissance Fair music kind of at all times. So unfortunately, Pentiment does not have their soundtrack on Spotify at the moment. Hopefully they fix that. We got any achievements? Is yeah, Andrew, we... number one with 670 out of 1,000, 24 achievements out of 41. Keith in second, 515 with 19 achievements. And I'm in last, 285 with 11, um, which I think I put in between 9 and 10 hours. I'm very slow at making decisions. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of tough decisions in this game. Uh, there are. I will give you that. Yeah, anytime I was downstairs with you, you're like, what did you pick here? What did you pick yeah, here? I'm yeah. like, oh, you got to make your own decisions. <laughs> you know, before we go into spoiler cast, I, I want to end another thing. I wish it gave you warning that a decision was going to have an impact. It would always, unless there was something I missed, it would always just happen. And then it would be like, oh, that will be remembered. I, like, well, I thought that's when the cloud was, or was it not all the time? Was it only when the cloud was there? You I don't know because be right, I I noticed the cloud popping up and I didn't use it all the time. But yeah, that was the only thing that I was like, oh man, I I kind of wish I knew ahead of time that something was going to be remembered. Um, because I I then I I would have maybe thought more carefully about some of my decisions. But outside of that, it was not, generally nothing too detrimental. No, I think you're right. I think it did happen outside of the cloud because there are a couple times that it took me off guard, and I always noticed the the little. Cloud isn't the right word. The little word bubble thing. It was, it, it gave you, you had an option every so often to just choose like almost like an inner monologue of, of questioning yourself. But there was like a third voice, which I think applies to some of the dream sequences, which we didn't even talk about that. That's a whole thing. Um, yeah, I just, that was the one of the weird things. Cause I remember there was one time in particular that I think I got like two of them back to back that something was remembered. And I thought, boy, I, I was, I was intense. I'm glad I hopefully made some good choices there. I know I made some bad ones because failure came up a couple times on mine. But well, if you notice with the dialogue, you'd have those dialogue checks where you only had one option, but it gave you a, a like a little bar on the side of like blue and red arrows or red, yeah. red triangles. Those were like good and bad decisions. Which again, it when it told you that your decision would be remembered, it didn't even tell you if it was good or bad. You didn't know until later on. So. I don't, I don't know. It's a thing. Yeah, I'm, I, I agree. I do kind of wish like you could see kind of your standings on some of the people, but I think that kind of isn't the purpose of this game. Like, I think it is more meant to be just you going through the story. And I think if they added that, it would have been more like, I don't know, felt more of a game than it is like a story being told. Well, I, which I think partially some of the good, bad decisions that you make aren't necessarily good or bad it's just about whether or not the thing's gonna happen because like i told someone like i made a decision to do something to keep somebody safe but they didn't want to because all of the quote-unquote bad choices i had made were like i took care of them i i considered them i did this for them so they were like they didn't want to leave me even though i was telling them to so it was yeah it was like a weird miss but it didn't completely take away i just thought it was a little bit weird that they didn't give you any warning. That's all. Yeah. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention that I absolutely loved in this game, since this does talk about a lot of old English stuff and it's a whole lot of history. I love that this game had a glossary as you're playing 
someone will say something that it will be in a different language or just something odd, and it'll have a red line underneath it, and you can hit the back button, and it opens up a quick glossary saying, oh, this is a uh, festival that happens every year, or so-and-so, this person is, blah, blah, blah. Or if they're talking about a person, you can hit the back button, and it shows the person's face in case you can't remember who they were. Because there is a lot of characters in this game, but that made it so much easier to remember things than I really like that, playing. too. Yeah. I didn't pay attention. I didn't read through a lot of the glossary stuff, at least like opening up the menu to do it. I would do it with a back button, um, but I never really opened up my book too much and looked through there. I just kind yeah, of went here. with what I was doing. Yeah. I think one complaint I have with the game, because Keith, you were saying earlier that it's not really linear. There's like a cutoff point for investigating or for talking to people about certain things. Because it's weird when you're walking around, like like I talk to everyone because randomly someone I didn't even know existed would want to have a conversation with me. But because um, it was getting close to like trying to figure out who the murderer was in chapter one. And yeah, there was a cutoff. I couldn't I couldn't do any more investigating, which I thought was kind of lame. There were some limitations to time and and there were certain actions that would force time movement. But out, and I, it, that, that was kind of one of those things too. Is it wasn't as frequent, I don't think, but it didn't always warn you about those, except for like meals. Meals were pretty much the one that you always knew was going to move time. Yeah, but uh, going back to the achievements, <laughs> I know we started that. Uh, for I don't think I'd really recommend this for achievement hunters because it's a pretty long game and a lot of the achievements are missable. Like this game is meant to be replayed multiple times. Because you obviously get an achievement for each person you kind of pick and doing these certain activities, which can be missed because time progresses as you're kind of investigating certain events that are going on. So I don't think I really recommend it for achievement hunters. It's a decent for gamer score. Like as Liz said, you know, I got a decent amount from beating it, but... Would you want to replay the game? Uh, probably not. Because I don't think your choices have too much of an impact. What if you went like... Oh, like a snarky route where you were just like sassy to everybody because there's a lot of like a lot of times where I was like I really kind of want to like flip it and be like super rude <laughs> I, that's gonna be hard to do because some of these characters you just love and I'm like I, I can't, know I can't but I'm just saying like I'm thinking that replayability wise the only way I would do it is if I could do that because I wouldn't want to see the same dialogue again because if yeah. you are snarky to somebody like I accidentally was like I read it as something else and the guy was like, whoa. <laughs> and I was like, oops. <laughs> so the dialogue does change. Because you're just naturally a snarky person. So you're like, that's a normal response. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know if I'd play it again. I think if uh, I did, I think it would be, I'd like t- put it down for a while and come back and do it again much later. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know how much I'd want to come back and play again. And, and not even because there's anything against it. It's just... I don't know if I'd do it again. Yeah. I think I'd but, like uh, it if it had chapter select. I'll say that. But that's yeah, a because great. The first chapter is definitely the slowest because obviously it's a new game. It's introducing you to these characters. So there's a lot of just, hi, I'm the baker. I do this and that and I know you from this kind of thing. So it's a lot of just kind of exposition in the first chapter. But I feel like the ball really starts rolling once the murder goes on. But, I mean, how would you do chapter select unless you wanted to change the whole thing? Because, like, one little decision might affect where you are later. So I don't know how they would do that. I don't know. It would almost it would almost have to take, like, a As Dust Falls type of approach. Like, it'd have to be a very webular uh, tree. Is that a word? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, though. Webular. I immediately got a visual though when you said it. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that, that makes exactly sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, but let's get to our review here so we can get to the spoilers. Uh, so for me, I absolutely loved Pentiment. Story wise, it is so well written. I was engrossed by the characters. I thought this, the whole mystery of it, because, you know, obviously there's a big overall story with each of these chapters. And to me, it just paid off so well. I, I thought the characters were so relevant and I just wanted to just talk to everyone, even if it had nothing to do with what was going on for the moment. I just had so much fun in this world. Uh, artistic wise, it is gorgeous. It looks like a beautiful, like medieval painting, just the art style, the text, 
is absolutely top notch. My my only really kind of complaint, like I said, I just wish there was a little more gameplay. I think I played three, maybe four puzzles out of this thirteen hour game, and I so I just wish there was a little more gameplay because uh, you are just mostly moving around and pressing A and talking to people, so that can get a little repetitive. But the story at least was so good, and it was so nice. The game was itself was just so beautiful to look at. There's not a lot for music, but what's there is absolutely phenomenal. I I'm giving this a ninety five. Yeah, I I don't know. I I don't know if I have a lot of different things to say because I I think the art style is fantastic. I I know it comes as a surprise, but I genuinely wanted to find out more and more about what was going to happen and I wanted to get to the the ending of the story. So I I genuinely got engrossed in this world of Pentiment and talking to everybody like Andrew said and just I not necessarily wanted to find out about them, but I just, I wanted to see, I don't know. I wanted to, I wanted to interact with them though. And I, I, I just wanted to get to the, the meat of the story. So I genuinely found it engrossing. Um, yeah, I think, I think a few small elements of things like a chapter select could add some replayability, but outside of that, I think it's a fantastic game. I, I would say a 93, for me, I think I'm going to give it an 89. I think that there are a couple, like, um, how do I word this? <laughs> Issues that I have with the story. I'll just write it. I'll just say it like that. Um, and overall, like, I'm, I was, ex- I was happy to play it, but I wasn't super crazy excited. There's something about it I can't put my finger on that I didn't like. But I, 99% of the game... I like well no eighty nine percent of the game I liked, <laughs> um, but looking at Metacritic um, for Xbox Series X eighty six and seven, um, seven, Xbox One TBD and six. There are not a lot of reviews. It's pretty much like ten or like zero. Oh, uh, because there's people who go, oh, that's a point and click adventure game. This is boring. And- um, well, actually, one of the critics. Give me one second. Uh, I, well, actually, so I don't know if there's truth to it, but I'd seen that it was getting a bit review bombed because it's Xbox exclusive. And so the PlayStation fanboys were like dogging on it. Unless it was though. one of the ones in a different language. I didn't see any of those. Maybe it, there it reviews from somewhere else. They said this they, is just Metacritic. They, yeah, they said they do try to clean up some of those things. So I don't know. It's, it's possible. But I, I had read that, uh, an article about that. There is one critic that gave it a 60 who said, Pentiment strives to exist somewhere between a history book and historical fiction, not quite committing to a detailed look at history or fulfilling a narrative arc. This is a detriment to the game's conclusion, dampening my memories of the game, save for the stories of individual characters. I retain a soft spot for the wise Illuminata and her conversations with Andreas about literature and religion, and I have a parental fondness for a young peasant girl who I watched grow from a gurgling toddler to a young woman. Witnessing their lives play out and it is a narrative delight, only enhanced by the creative use of Pentiment's different fonts to better convey a person's societal station or education. But limiting how much time the player actually has to engage in the game's best parts hurts the overall experience too much. Oh, maybe that's something that I kind of wish was more. I wish, like, more interactions that, like, you want to partake in. Like, more... Yeah, gameplay elements. <sighs> yeah, like, yeah. more choice and, like, because I... I mean, it wasn't linear, but, like... A lot of the things that, like, everything happened the way that it was supposed to, like, certain conversations and stuff were just, like, I kind of wanted to roam around the town some more. Yeah. See, that's where I, I and not and not even with you, like, more so that review, because I think, I think I agree with the gameplay elements of wanting to do more things, but I loved the limited time aspect of it. I think that added so much because it was this murder mystery and you couldn't, you truly couldn't find out everything there was to know about it like you want to but you can't you don't have the uh, enough time and i think that added element of it kind of made it more fun to me yeah oh and one last thing with you because you were talking about the puzzles there is one where you're like figuring out a code and it looks super complicated and i was like i don't have time for this so i went to youtube and then i saw like just them doing the first one and i was like wait this is easy yeah it was stupid easy (laughs) i just looked at it and i was like i don't feel like doing it so but it was like it was crazy easy yeah i think if i recall they actually kind of explained how to do it before you even 
pull it up. I didn't pay full. I attention blame to myself. It. <laughs> oh no, that's that's. I'm not even insulting you. Liz. I just yeah. I, I, if I recall, he actually kind of explains how the puzzle works, and then you just do it. That's it. <laughs> but spoilers. All right. <laughs> All right, but let's wrap it up here. Uh, if you have any game suggestions, please email us at gamepassgrabbing at gmail dot com or find us on Facebook at GBGP Pod or Twitter at GBGP Pod. I've been your hardcore gamer, Osanja. You can find me on Xbox Live at Firebird0952. Uh, Keith, take it away. I've uh, been Keith. It's party. <laughs> and I'm Liz Noob, Gamer Tech, coming on Dean. I'm on Twitter at Liz Noob, New Busy W. I told you I like, that was my I, new outro. I like, yeah, I like you did like a uh, inside joke on our Twitter. <laughs> I was, I was, it was less about an inside joke. It was more about trying to roast myself. <laughs> For, for yes. my cringy 2007 Facebook status. <laughs> Keith Lynch is party. <laughs> it was, there was nothing inside joke about that. That was purely just a look how cringy I was back in 2007. I miss this. Uh, all right, but let's get to the spoilers here. So if you do not want to listen to spoilers, we're going to talk about some of our choices here. So, uh... Bye. Yeah, that's good enough time, I guess. So chapter one. Um, chapter one... Obviously, is the main crux of the first murder, which is of the Baron. But yeah, right at the beginning, your friend Piero is uh, was accused of murder. Which right off the beginning, right after that moment too, I was like, man, this happened straight up evil. Because this guy's like, ah, he's touching the knife. You're you're the you're the murderer. And it's just like I can't believe how flippant he is. Just like, yeah, I'm gonna let this brother die. He was scared, but that's another thing. Nobody was sticking up for for him. Uh, for for Piero. Yeah, I mean, one of them was like, yeah, I don't really think it... It's like you work with him every single day, all day, and if you don't think he did it, then why aren't you rallying for him? This is another reason why it's like, oh, they're not evil, but it's like, well, stand up for something. So, this is a weird... I, I kind of see this on two levels, because on one, especially for the time, it, I go back to it, it, it doesn't make it right. But back then, the way the time was, is the abbot had the power. So if he was yeah. the one who said it, everyone kind of knew they just had to fall in line, whether they liked it or not. And and they hid behind religion. And as someone who grew up in church, now, I, I didn't grow up in a church atmosphere where there was a lot of belief of things like demon were, you know, demon possession and all that. But there is still every so often of like, you know, the spirits took over someone who otherwise, and you, you can kind of masquerade things that you want to believe around, around religion sometimes, especially when they're that ingrained in it. And it seems silly to be like, Oh, they genuinely thought that, but they genuinely could at least write it off. as like, Oh, a demon possessed Biro. And even though he's old and frail, he's <clears throat> murdering people. Yeah. It's just, which that's what they said. They exactly. said, you know, it's very possible that it happened. So there, there's all that. But yeah, I think mostly, I didn't even think he was evil. I just thought he sucked. Like he was just a jerk. Like he was a power trip jerk. He was a, he was a nerd who got some power <laughs> and was like, I'm going to just be a jerk to everybody. He's and that was freaking the, nerd. And everything that they <laughs> described about like Father Matthias versus Gurnaut was just like, Matthias was someone who was like, yes, I'm blessed, but I, I actually want to, at least to the best of my ability, kind of share this. Almost like a Bill Gates type of guy versus like a, a Jeff Bezos. No, Elon Musk. There. You know, <laughs> it, two billionaires, one shares a little bit nicely. The other one just wants to wants to buy things and fire people. I don't know. <laughs> uh, interesting analogy. But I, I do agree, Liz. Like, I, I do wish, like, it, it was kind of frustrating me where I'm like, why am I the outsider, the only one who's trying to actually like find proper justice. But I mean, obviously if people stuck up and stuff, it, this obviously wouldn't be much of a game. Well, I mean, people did try to stick up. They tried to help you. Like the, the doctor was like, Hey, I know you're not allowed to be in the Abbey. Just like throw a rock on my window. I'll let you in. So some people did want to help you for what they could behind closed doors, but they yeah. didn't want to get caught doing it. But that's the whole thing, though. Like, if someone is misusing, like, I I mean, okay, i also say I, I didn't grow up in a church, so I don't know as much as you guys. But if someone is making the church, like, if someone's having the church do evil things and is making people hate the church, then as a Christian, wouldn't it be your obligation 
to stand up for what was right. That's another thing that I don't really, because it's like, oh, no, we have to, like, protect the church. It's like, no, you're making people hate the church. You're making people hate God. You're you're confusing, though, of, like, modern times to back then. Back then, you were essentially a Christian or you were killed. <laughs> like, they, that's that's a lot of, they, the Inquisition was going on. So if you were a straight up, like, God sucks or whatever, or just say, like, the church is awful... They would say you're blasphemous, you're a witch, and they would they would kill you. Like that that was society. You can't say that. You had to be part of the church. And then not only that, you also had to pay for penance. If you sinned, you had to pay the church a tax in order to have your sin be forgiven. So that was the whole her, her purpose of uh, Martin Luther, who essentially called the church out like you guys are charging way too much for sin which is supposed to be freely given, like forgiveness of sin. But I mean, like for me, I'm just, I'm not talking like, you know, ra- like saying like, oh, we need to get rid of like the head. I'm I'm saying like standing up for Perot. Like would they have been killed for them saying, I know, I don't think it was him. We need to investigate this further. Yeah. It would have been blasphemous because you're speaking out against the abbot. Yeah. Why would you be part of a, of a church like that though? Like I said, you didn't have a choice. Well, um, if every single person who didn't want to be taken advantage of burned them down. I mean, well, that's what they tried to do in act two. It, it, well, and on top of that, like, I don't know, I don't necessarily know with the monks, but if you, if, to, again, depending what path you took, but I went to the library and I was reading the history of the nuns. All of the nuns were sold off to the church by their family. Many of them yeah. from wealthy families, no less. It was, it was a situation where they didn't have a choice in life. They were literally sold off to the church and it was a terrible thing that happened. It's not okay. It's just... They did not have a choice but to be there. But if they said anything bad enough, they could be killed. So if they wanted to just survive in this awful place, they just kind of went along with it and said what they said and did what they did behind closed doors. But and, I also don't and get that's that why with I liked like, it. I also don't get it, though, with the women, though, because so they were sold off um, to the church. And then one of them, the Baron, tries to rape her and beats her up. And then it was a Mother Cecilia. Is that the one that was the leader at the time. I think so. Yeah. She brushed it under the rug. So right. why, why didn't she, she's like, Oh, well the Abbey will lose commissions. Like, why do you care? You're a slave. Uh, I mean, that that's what I don't uh, get. Like, I just feel like there's like so many things where it's like, people are just like going with it. Where it's just like, no, you, you, she, uh, Cecilia had the power to do something there. I mean, that, that kind of still happens. That's, that's, yeah, big, still happens today. that's, that's a, unfortunate if we want to get real dark yeah that still happens that's today. that's human nature yeah, yeah. look at hollywood um, and, and hollywood <laughs> it still happens in the catholic church it still happens in many yeah. places it's it's not okay i don't know and it's and it's a kind of a reality the game takes it, 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 i don't and it's not that i'm like oh i like that they talk about the subject because boy it's cool to talk about but it, it adds a it's very much what that time was yeah, but this is what I meant earlier when I said like I would just die so quickly if I lived in a time period, like, or in honestly present day if I lived in a country that was uh, like this, I feel like I would die very quickly because I also like just don't understand it. Like I, I kind of like when you're talking like present day and stuff, it's just like I don't. I feel like I would just. It makes my blood boil, just like listening about it in the game. I'm just like, oh, just freaking take him in the woods, all the women, just. <laughs> I just, it's true though. I mean, and, but like, that's what was nice. Cool about this game is so yeah. You're in chapter three, right? Keith. Yeah, it was, I, I was just wrote to mother Illuminata. Oh, okay. Oh, so you haven't gone to the cloister yet. No, I'm cause there's, there's a segment. There. So in chapter three, the ab, the abbey has gone, but the sisters are still there. And you actually, as you said, Keith, you actually get a tour with one of the sisters and she was traded off as a child you know, she was part of a, a family that her parents were barren, but they essentially made a promise to God that if they had a child, you know, she would become a nun. And so sure enough, they had a child. And so as soon as she turned 18 or 16, yeah, she was given off to the church because that was what they promised. And but like but you play a female in the third act and it was cool to kind of see this aspect of like like you're saying, like these women aren't happy about the situation. They, they clearly say these things, but as Keith said, they kind of say it behind closed doors. Because if you say too much, you'll just be accused of being a witch and just killed. Like, you just couldn't do it. And 
that was just the unfortunate aspect of that time. It just like it blows my mind where it's just like if everybody just was like fed up. They're all talking about it. Well, yeah, that's, 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 that's the crux of chapter two, which yeah. you're on now. Yeah, I'm but, on chapter two. But the peasants are fed up with it because the Abbey kept increasing the tax. And they're like, we literally have zero money for ourselves. And this is where I slightly disagree, Keith, when you said Gurnaud is just a, a nerd with power. I actually think he was kind of evil because he forbade poor people to go into the woods and forage and hunt. That's and true. and like that's just evil. And like even your character said that like you're raising taxes and like him raising taxes was semi justified of like well we need income like we literally don't like we lost all our income we need something to stay afloat. But it was just like well you're also not letting them go to the woods. That's just being cruel for cruel sake. So that is true. And and with so this is actually where and Liz you were talking about this very early on and this is where we kind of stopped you. So I'm sorry we didn't mean to be rude. But this is it where I also agree but it's a it's a very weird thing because my thought process is the same way. It's, okay, you come back here, you're super wealthy now, you're a successful artist. Why don't you pay off the church? Why don't you give a bunch of money to the, the people? But the abbey and abbot are so freaking jerkish that if you just pay off the abbey, he's going to be like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to tax them anyways. Yeah. Or you give them all the money. He's going to be like, all right, well, cool. Now you're just going to pay me all that in tax. And then they just end up poor. It, it, so it was like, I, I wanted to think like, hey, he's going to help them. But I think in the back of his mind, he knew just giving money wasn't going to do anything. The abbey had plenty of money. Like someone even talks about them, them just getting deliveries of money just at, at one point in the night and, and just like, okay, yeah, they, they're they fine. They don't need anything from the peasants. They're just taking it to keep them down. Yeah. Well, that's why, like I said, I wasn't sure about customs because it's, you know, we, they go to dinner and they're the only ones that have bread because they can't afford bread. Only their guests get bread. So it's like, I, even like giving them food, like sneaking them food, like doing something like that. I mean, the mill was a huge issue too because they kept raising the prices. Oh, yeah, have, that like build a sucked. mill. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, I just like, that's why I just like even little things. So I, so fun fact, I actually got both achievements for Hannah and Martin on chapter two because of my cloud save. I picked Hannah the first time and then my cloud save went back and went, eh, all right, I'll pick Martin this time. Well, hold on, hold on. So wait, you're chapter two? Well, yeah. At the end of chapter two, I had the choice uh, to well, pick between Hannah and Martin. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I, yeah. I oh, yeah. Well, choices. actually, who did we pick for chapter one? Because I picked chapter Ferenc. one. Chapter one. Oh, me too. Ferenc. We all did. Right, yeah, <laughs> no, or, just... or, or Fennec. Ferenc? Him Fennec. And, and Martin. Cause... The prior. Sorry, Liz. Yeah, I, I, I left out any townspeople in the first one. I was like, nope. All the townspeople were okay. I, I didn't even mention anyone. I even stood up for Otilia. I got her land saved. Because I was yep. like, screw this guy. This guy sucks. Everyone should go oh, down. Oh, so you were law. Yeah. I wasn't law, but I did... I don't know. Maybe I was then, because I don't know. He just I'm... said he got he saved her house because he studied law. Yeah, and I was able to say Bavarian law like dictates that you know the uh, lease was signed with her grandfather, not her husband. Oh, so maybe I did do law then, because yeah. I had See, that. Yeah. Either way, I saved Otilia. I threw um, Martin under the bus first, and they're like, "Oh no, we don't think it's him," because I mean, deadbeat loser who abandoned his family. He's a thief. He's he's awful. And I was like, he maybe he did kill him. <laughs> um, and I wanted to protect the old lady and, um, I, the only one I didn't investigate cause like I got that cutoff point was the, what is a stonemason? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I so I don't think I investigated him either. So I had no choice but to do, cause my thought process was that most of the people in the church are not doing good things. So I was like, he's probably one of them. So I, was, gonna- <laughs> I was hoping I could investigate the abbot. I was like, I want the abbot dead. I want to kill him. But he obviously wasn't a choice in the first one, which is unfortunate. Uh, I also even there was a, a choice at the beginning too, where like even like saving the book, there were like little choices too. Yeah. Because I I asked Andrew if he did, and I I just felt wrong about it, so I was like, I feel like I should do what Andrew did, but then I was like, screw it, we'll just have something to talk about. Nothing really came of it that I know of, really. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I saved the book and I got an achievement. Same. I saved the book too. I but- didn't. But I don't, I, I don't remember anything happening. So what I was curious about in Act One, did you? There was a blood stain on the wall, and I, I knew he had impact damage. Did you see? Did you find a connection there? Because I was trying to figure out what that connection was. I feel like they were, they were together, but I didn't find an answer to it. I, I think 
the, the way he kind of died is meant to be broad. Well, right. I uh, don't think there's any true answer, but it feels like there's at least a connection to those two pieces, and I couldn't make it. So, I, yeah, I don't think there's any right answer because – I not to because I'm assuming you don't want me to tell you the ending. The overall of the story is I think who you are picking legitimately did murder. They were just puppets. So I think by having kind of different aspects of how the Baron was kind of killed, whether it was a knife or an impact, kind of let the choice be a bit broad. So for me, my two options were the stonemason and uh, F- uh, Ferric or Fennec, whatever his name was. Uh, I didn't want to do the stonemason because I was investigating him a little bit. And I, I stopped because like I I was like, if this guy did murder the Baron, like he's justified. I'm pretty sure the stonemason lost two of his kids because of the Baron. I think they fell in the salt mine. I'm confused. The autopsy stated that he did not die from being stabbed. It was blunt force trauma. So yeah. what do you mean like how the cause of death changes? Well, not, not so much how it changes, but it meant to be broad. So I think it's very possible that the stonemason killed them. Because he's a big guy, but if the widow killed him, it could be something like, oh, he more died from the knife. I don't know. See, that, I just what I mean. I think it's just meant to be kind of broad. No, because they, they, they said like it was the head injury that killed him. But no. like, for instance, there was a shovel on yeah, the ground so that the anyone could pick Andrew. up. It, Liz oh. and I did the autopsy. And, and yeah, that's what I, Liz is saying is that there's... He he says it's head impact or head trauma, and then there's the blood stain on the wall. So I feel like so maybe you're right. Maybe the stonemason slammed his head against the wall because I don't think anyone else could have, even Martin, like could have the way they they describe him. So I, but I think you're right. So at the at the end of chapter three, you end up finding out who the the thread puller is. is that yeah, and yeah, that's the nickname they give him. And that's I'm guessing that's like a one and only answer type of thing. Yes. Okay, and that's the person who does it all. So, anyways, so that, so let's go back to, to Act Two then, because because I my ending and it sounds like maybe yours was different. Is I had Hannah and Martin as my options, and I picked Hannah. Then I had a cloud issue, and then I went back and I picked Martin, and I got two achievements for both. Which of them. one's Hannah? She was the one that was having the affair with Lenhart. She, the wife of the innkeeper. Oh, was it she was the one. Well, she, technically, the innkeeper is having an affair with a lot of people. Oh, the innkeeper is too, or the innkeeper? Oh, no, 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 not the innkeeper. No, no, I think you're right about that. But uh, I mean, uh, the Miller. Yes, he's the, the one who's having an affair. He, that guy, like, he sucks. I don't think they could. They couldn't have written a more like hateable character. <laughs> I, it made me so mad because Mailer stands up to so many people, and I'm sitting at Lenhart's table, and he's like, "Else, shut up!" Like, yeah. he is such a dick to his wife, and I want to just son. stand up and punch him. And it's the only person it wouldn't let me stand up to. I was so mad. That, well, did you go time. hunting with them? I did. <laughs> I, I, I pulled my crossbow. I loaded my crossbow, and pointed at him. It was I was like uh, threatening to shoot him. Nice. Well, yeah. I, I finally because I was like I don't know. That's the only thing I can do other than like go back to the town commons. So I did that, trying to see if I could find any more info. But um, yeah, that guy they they could not have written a more hateable character. And I thought Gurnot was pretty hateable, but man, the Miller was so hateable. Yeah, I was glad. So I was trying real hard to point it to paint it to him. But I mean, luckily he died too. Like he didn't. Oh, yeah, you got to the end. Yeah, did he die in yours too? Yeah, no matter who you pick, he he ends up. I don't know why he ends up defending Martin. It's kind of weird. Like I get why he defends Hannah, but he defends. He comes up to defend Martin too, and then the huh. same thing happens. His wife and his son run out, and then you go, okay. and the the Abbey gets destroyed. So my choices were Guy and Martin. Oh, I didn't okay. do Martin. Because I'm assuming Martin's an imposter. I don't think that's – is that really Martin? It is. It, or it's, no, it is an imposter because I found out, yeah, he's – I talked to a traveler. I don't know. Anyone, you find out, yeah, he was – he knew Martin and he traveled with him. Everyone used to say they looked alike and he was there when Martin died. Um, but he figured yeah. once Martin died, he just took over him. But he knew everything that Martin knew basically because they were so close. That's what I figured. Cause That's I saw creepy. Does he get back with the wife? He does. But he's like a good person. That's yeah. why I mean Keith liked Martin. That's, That's why I didn't pick him at of... first. But then I did because I was just like, well, I'll just get the extra achievement now. Plus, if he's friends with Martin, that doesn't say much about his character either. Yeah. Well, Martin becomes a highwayman and like a straight up bandit. And that's what the imposter Martin was telling you of, you know, I had a partner in crime and we hit up a wagon that we thought was just like travelers but they're actually knights of a bank. And so, yeah, they ended up killing one of them and the other one got wounded. And you, you find out that Martin's the one who actually died. 
Dang. Yeah. But the guy who's posing as Martin is actually really nice. Yeah, he's like, so that's he's, why I, he wanted to be a family man. He wanted to take yeah. care of his family. That's why he okay. didn't want Otto to do what he did. I was wondering why you guys were saying that you liked Martin. Yeah. He, he was very unlikable. His kids are like, <laughs> he's raising up his kids. He's nice to his wife. No, they like, don't have kids anymore, though, because they're, they're, Martin's actual son died and they didn't have any more kids. I, don't I think. thought they, I thought Brigida was their daughter. No, Brigida was Martin's wife. No, um... I kind of get confused with all the names, to be honest. Brigido is definitely Martin's wife. I, no, it wasn't. Eva. Eva's his wife. No, Eva was the mom. You might be right. I don't know. I know I'm right. I'm uh, right. I don't know. All right. Well, either You're way, right. <laughs> he doesn't... He, they don't come back and have any more children. Um, yeah. Because she's, like, devastated at the loss of their son. Which is also Which, a whole I, dark thing with your own loss of a child. Oh my gosh, the way this game that's heart tugging. Yes. Oh my god, when that happened, that scene, I told Liz about it. That's why I don't do want to do it anymore. Ah, uh, I got choked up a little bit. Yeah, that's a oh hard my one. God. But that's another thing. Like uh, I was talking earlier with like the townspeople, a lot of them lose their children. But yeah, throughout throughout they talk about family members that die. Sometimes it's kids. But they have no choice but to stay together, to yeah. work through it, to work hard. And here he is with all his money, and he just leaves. Because, I mean, I'm assuming he's sending money back to her or whatever, but that's why it's just like, you know, you look at the families that stick together, and it's like, they have to. Like, he he doesn't really have to work. You know, they have to, they, they, their mind is elsewhere. Like, his yeah. thoughts are always going to be with him, because yeah. he's just traveling around. No, I and I'm not saying it's right by any means, but it's I think it's almost I think it's almost the difference in how the times were, if you kinda of think about it where, you know, when you have the small community of peasants, it's like everyone kinda of bands together around that loss of it, but like the the Uber wealthy, it's like I don't know. They just don't know what to do with themselves because they felt like they should have been able to protect their child because they have all that money. And he watched his child just die to the plague, which was just the thing that happened back then. Yeah. Oh my God. And I'm, and again, doesn't mean like he couldn't have been a better person about it. Obviously, it's not like oh, it, but it still makes it really sad. And it's yeah, it's just like the the thought of him just helplessly watching his child die is not all that pleasant. I mean, do you find out if he even loved his wife because he wasn't pumped about getting married? You, you kind of choose. Yeah, and it, it. Oh, you choose. I think so, and it and it kind of at least makes it seem like he he did until the fact of them losing their child. And that sort of seems to be the trigger point where he just distanced himself from everything and tried to hide and nothing really worked at that point. So that's why he went back trying to like almost rekindle his, his lost flame there in Kirsa and tassing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I love that each chapter had this big time leap because like once I saw that time leap in a, like, I instantly was going around town. I'm like, oh my gosh, who's dead? Who's still alive? Like, what's going on? How are how are people doing? And it was cool seeing like this person as a child is now married to this person, and then Il oh, Peter then you went to alive. Claus. Yeah, Il Peter lives till the end. Um, One person was like, because he didn't realize that two people got married, and she's like, well, there's not a lot of options. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my sassy. word. <laughs> yeah, Veronica. But uh, I, I even like in chapter three, yeah, I was going around town like, oh, who's married to who? Like, what's going on? Ah, oh, man. But yeah, when you go to Claus and you find out about his wife and son, like that was also heart wrenching. Yeah, there's a, there's a, definitely some sad moments there. Uh, 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 when you played as Magdalene, uh, do you remember what you picked? Because I did. I know at least I picked the Barb's one. I was like, I am going to be so no. freaking sassy every chance no, I, I get. I did a flirt. I I was a tinkerer. And um, yeah, my professions were tinkering and um, oh, uh, multilingual. And then and then yeah, my personality was I was a flirt, which was also pretty funny though because it had some really funny like choice options. No, did I not take a screenshot of it? I had such a like her sassy Barb comments. She she roasted them because it's like the group of three guys. Yeah. And yeah, she roasted him and like one of them goes, Jesus Christ, lay off already. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. 
Uh, so how far are you in the mural in Act Three? Um, I I haven't even started it. I like I said, oh, okay. I was just getting back the letters from Mother Illuminata and Esther. Do you have any theories who the thread puller is? I I literally it's just a it's a wild bonkers theory, but I would say was it Father Thomas, the the priest in town. Hi. The... Uh, do you want me to tell you? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Do it for the podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is literally the end of the game. Like, do we want to get that big of heavy of a spoiler? I don't know. If you don't want to do it, I'll, I'll figure it out. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to I'd say maybe here. don't say it. Uh, I, yeah, I don't think I want to say it to you, Keith, because if you want to finish this game, it's it's a nice ending. Um, right. So, but um, it, yeah, it's. I really liked how the game finished it because it actually, there's clues literally since act one as to who the thread puller is. And so I thought it was really cool how they kind of tied everything together. And I was just, it, it was a really nice ending. So what you're um, saying is I'm not right. I'm not, I'm not saying anything, <laughs> but uh, at the very end though, I liked the mural. You actually see kind of a family tree that goes on, which is a really cool touch. So you actually get to see some of the other characters that you interact with and how they went. And like, if their lineage end with at certain characters, I thought that was a really cool touch. So how but, uh, how far would you say I am from the end? Because I feel like the chapter, like chapter two, is shorter than chapter one. Is chapter three the same or shorter? Chapter three is shorter. Chapter three is definitely the boringest because it's it's linear. You you have to do essentially all the tasks. There's some things you can slightly deviate. But you essentially have to go, they say like, oh, talk to this person about this history, talk to this person. You literally have to go to each person and learn. And then they say, what do you want to paint? Um, Also, too, I also noticed, I don't know if it was always the case, but in Act 3, I noticed the top choice was kind of the friendlier choice or the choice that would appease the person you're talking to. I I didn't notice if that was going on the entire game, but it definitely was the case in Act 3. Because whenever I did a mural and I picked something else, people were like, oh, that's that's a bad choice. And I would reload my save and the top choice, they would always go, oh, that's a good one. Hmm. So I, I don't know if that's just a change in Act 3. Interesting. Yeah. But anyway. I, I had a random question. Yeah. So you're talking about how, like, because I've, I've heard of Martin Luther and like, that thing that he posted on the church or whatever. How long did he stay alive after that, though? Because you're saying if anybody stands up to the church, because I I'm ignorant of this. Like I, if anyone stands up to the church, they'll be accused of witchcraft. They'll be murdered. Then how did he even get that far? Was he murdered shortly after? I think he. I actually don't remember. But I, I actually he, don't remember either. He, <laughs> but I I do remember the part that I remember is he literally just tacked it up to the like the doors of the church overnight as like a yeah. here we go. Yeah, but then there's the Lutheran church, right? Yep. So I feel like he must have stayed alive after that. But that's what that's what I meant earlier, where it's just like, if everyone banded together and you're like, oh, no, they'll be killed right away. It's like, then how did reform happen? How did, like, like what happened to this guy? I don't remember. I'm going to have to look this up now. Because from what I think, I don't think he was instantly persecuted. No, I think he, I don't like, think they... held trial and was, like, given a chance to, like, recant. Yeah, is what I want to say because that was usually what they did when it was like a big enough thing is that they could have them like recant their thing to be like, hey, no, everybody who believed what I said, I was just kidding. I, I was a yeah. little bit crazy there. Don't believe that. <laughs> and and if they didn't, then they just murder that person and be like, see, that's what happens when you believe what that guy believed. Otherwise, you can believe what we believe. But I remember it got so much traction so quickly that. Yeah, they couldn't just make it disappear. Uh, but I don't fully remember. I got to look this up now. I, I have the, the 95 theses pulled up of, of the Wikipedia here. <laughs> on, on the Wikipedia? The Wikipedia. <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I don't think I can fully answer this question. There's a lot of things in Latin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you probably would have had a better choice just looking up Martin Luther. Yeah. You know, you say these things. Uh, he died in 1546. Oh, so no, because the game starts in 1515. Is it? No, it starts in like 1525, I think. I thought it was 1515. <laughs> it's probably it might be 1515. Publication date October 31st, 1517. So yeah, he lived another 30 years or so. 
Yeah. So there you go. So I guess he lived for a while. I don't. I don't know. So he wasn't instantly persecuted. But uh, no, that's a good question, Liz. It really is because I don't actually know. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyway, I think that's gonna we're gonna wrap up here on our spoiler cast. So for those of you who stuck around to listen, I uh, hope we didn't ruin anything for you. I hope you just enjoyed the discussion. Uh, but yeah, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If not, we'll be back next week. Bye, we'll disappoint you that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. We love you all. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye, guys.